Hello, I'm Dr. Dara Richardson Heron, and I'm the Chief Engagement Officer for the All of Us Research Program. The All of Us Research Program is an ambitious effort to partner with one million or more people to speed up health research advances that will result in more personalized and effective prevention and treatment for all of us based upon our unique lifestyles, environment, and biology. So to our amazing participant partners who have already joined our program, welcome and thank you so very much for signing up for the All of Us Research Program. We truly appreciate and value each and every one of you. And to those of you uh, who haven't yet signed up, we are delighted that you've joined us today. And it, it is our hope that what you hear today will get you excited about our awesome program. And most importantly, we want you to be interested in going to our Join All of Us website and signing up to join us in our efforts to improve health and health care for all of us. You know, I'm really honored to be here with each of you today as we launch our All of Us speaker series. And although we've called it a speaker series, perhaps we should have named it a conversation series because we truly want each session to be a conversation with you. And our uh, speaker or conversation series was specifically designed to provide valuable information to our participant partners and also to give you an opportunity to ask all of the burning questions you have about precision medicine and the All of Us research program but didn't know who to ask. As part of the series, we'll invite experts from many areas such as diabetes, heart disease, mental health and wellness, and cancer to tell you about the latest promising research breakthroughs and to speak about how your biological makeup may impact your health and medical treatments and also to share information that we can all use to stay healthy longer. And we also want to explain how your participation in the All of Us research program may help researchers gain a much better understanding of chronic diseases and disease prevention overall. Now, we'll also share information and important updates about the program, including inviting our security and privacy experts to explain how your data is protected. And we'll also provide opportunities for you, our participant partners, to share information about your experience with our program. We, we plan to host these important conversations regularly, so please stay tuned. And also visit joinallofus.org to sign up for updates and to subscribe to our All of Us YouTube channel and so that you can learn more about our upcoming conversations. Again, we really hope that our speaker series will provide you with a great opportunity to learn more about the All of Us Research Program and Precision Medicine. And very importantly, we want to hear from you and answer any questions you have. And so to that end, you may submit a question or comment by using the chat box on the right side of the stream. And you may also tweet your questions to us using the hashtag join all of us. And note that we'll be spending about half of our time together today answering your questions. So we really do want to hear from you. And don't worry if we don't get to your specific question during the live stream. We'll post responses to the ones we missed at joinallofus.org forward slash conversations. And now to kick off this very important series of conversations, we have an incredibly special host today, Dr. Frances Collins. As many of you know, Dr. Collins is the director of the National Institutes of Health and the visionary who first conceived of the All of Us research program. Dr. Collins is a physician and researcher who has dedicated his life to improving the health of the nation. And we are so very fortunate to have Dr. Collins with us here today. And it's now my distinct pleasure to hand the program over to him. Dr. Collins. Well, thank you very much, Dara. And it's wonderful to be able to be part of this very first conversation with participants and potential participants in the All of Us program. And yes, this has been a dream in the minds of some of us for quite a long time. I had the privilege of leading the Human Genome Project back in the 1990s, and it wound up with a complete sequence of all the letters of the Human DNA Instruction Book in 2003. Now, 16 years later, we are seeing the opportunity to use that kind of information, plus lots of other kinds of information about environment and lifestyle, health behaviors, socioeconomic status, all of the things that play out in terms of whether someone has the opportunity to enjoy good health or whether illness is threatening, and if so, how best to manage it. Because there's still a lot we don't know. 
So the goal of what we're going to talk about here this evening is to tell you where we are with this remarkable program on a scale never before attempted in the United States and in a way never really before attempted either, involving you not just as passive participants in a research study that might or might not tell you very much about yourself, but very much as active participants, our partners. And that's why we're glad to have the chance to speak to all of you about it in this very first session. And there'll be many more to come, as you heard from Dara a minute ago. So what are we talking about? It is basically this concept of precision medicine. Precision medicine is the alternative to one size fits all. It's an emerging approach for disease treatment and prevention that takes into account the individual variability in lifestyle, socioeconomics, environment, and biology. All of those things play out in terms of our own experiences as human beings on this planet and have a big role in terms of whether or not uh, we are able to remain healthy or whether something happens. Again, we'd like to understand all those things for the benefit of all of us. But to, in order to do so, we really need to have the opportunity to collect a very large amount of information on a large number of people, you, our partners. Let me give you an example about how this can make a big difference in terms of actual significant medical circumstance. Women who develop breast cancer and who have negative lymph nodes at the time that their cancer is diagnosed and removed surgically are faced with a question about whether or not they need also to go through chemotherapy, which as most of you know is a pretty tough circumstance in terms of pretty toxic drugs, loss of your hair, feeling pretty sick, and it's expensive. And yet we've known for some time that most women in that situation are already cured by the surgery and don't really need that. We just didn't know which ones. Precision medicine is an effort to figure out which women still need that chemotherapy and will be benefited from it. And by studying the specific parameters of what's going on in that individual person's cancer, it is now possible using this uh, particular study called TaylorX to make that prediction. This study ran over 10 years. It studied more than 10,000 women used a particular way of looking at the genes that were on or off in that particular breast cancer and was able then to come up with a prediction that 70% of early stage pa patients of this sort really don't need chemotherapy and we know which ones. So that's what you would call a precision medicine outcome of substantial benefit. That's just an example. But there's so many other ways we'd like to make this happen. Now that study was done very specifically focused on women with breast cancer, but suppose you wanted to do this for diabetes or heart disease or Alzheimer's or asthma or a long list of other kinds of conditions, and you didn't want to have to design a study for every one at great expense. It would be great if you actually had a very large group of individuals on whom all the data that you'd want to be able to assess for this kind of conclusion uh, was being provided. That's what this study is called All of Us. The time is right for this. I dreamed of this and even wrote a silly paper about it about 15 years ago that everybody thought was utterly impractical. But now the time is right. Research advances have come along, making it possible to be able to look at DNA, the hereditary material, at very low cost. People like yourselves are interested in taking part in research, especially if you get the results back on yourself, which we aim to do in this program in an unprecedented way. And there's a lot of new technologies that have come along, including things like wearable sensors that are keeping track of what's happening day to day, which can be very valuable in trying to make this study even more powerful. All of those things, plus the opportunity to deal with very large data sets and also to develop highly secure computer systems, means that this is the right moment to mount a study of this sort. So what is all of us? It, aims to make this vision of precision medicine a reality with your help. The power of one million people, maybe more if we have the opportunity to do so, but we're aiming for one million, and many of you watching are already part of this, and we hope others will join in in, in the very near future, and I'll show you shortly where we are with the effort to do that recruitment. It is pretty amazing to see all the people that have already signed up. So the idea here is if you really want to understand all of those things, you want a very large group of people and you want them to be very diverse as well so that we are looking at the things that influence health, 
in terms of socioeconomic status, geography, are you in the city, are you in the country, what's your racial and ethnic background, all of these things that play out in terms of health disparities, we want to be able to understand those as well. But we can only do so with you and with your participation as our partners. Yes, we want diet kinds of ways, and that also includes health status. People have asked, oh, do you just want people to sign up who already have a medical diagnosis? Well, that would be fine, but we also want people to sign up who are totally healthy. I'm a member, by the way, and right now I'm doing pretty well, so I didn't sign up because I was trying to get an answer to some illness. I want to be part of this in order to learn everything I can about myself and also to help uh, in a larger way with my other million partners uh, see what we could learn together. Diversity, really important here, and this study is more diverse than anything has ever been attempted before. In fact, uh, when you look at the way in which uh, this is one of the things that's new in all of us, let me point out a few of the others. How many people have signed up? Well, gosh, more than 195,000 people already signed up on the way to a million. That makes it already just about the biggest study that the National Institutes of Health has ever put on, and we're just getting started. Other things that are new here, well, of those people, more than 117,000 have already provided samples, a blood sample and a urine sample, which is going to be really valuable to see what's happening as far as their body's health. And those are all sent off to a very secure biobank at the Mayo Clinic uh, in Minnesota. Again, I mentioned how important it is to us that we have a diverse group of people, and we have seen that achieved remarkably. About 50% of the people who've signed up are from racial and ethnic minority groups, African Americans, Latinos, uh, Native Americans. And 75% of them, if you add in people of lower socioeconomic status or who live in rural communities, uh, which are generally underrepresented, are in this study. So we're going to learn a lot about people who generally don't get asked to take part in this, and we're delighted that they've signed up in this way. People were asked to do a lot. If you're part of this, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, fill out surveys that ask you a lot of questions about your health practices and what else is going on in your life. And people have been very good about filling those out and getting them back. They don't take a lot of time, but they're really important uh, to build the database. And yes, if you have a Fitbit, uh, we have asked you to begin uh, to see ways that you can share that data uh, with the study. Uh, and at the moment, it's Fitbits, but other wearable devices will be coming along. All of this adds greater uh, depth to the study. I should have said right now, if you're worried about, wait a minute, is, are people looking at the data and knowing it's me? They will not be. All of your data is going to be anonymized before researchers get to look at it. I'll say more about that in a minute, but that's really important for your own confidentiality and privacy. We want to be sure that people are able uh, to give the blood and urine samples and have some simple physical measurements made. Many of you have already had that done because you're involved in one of the health provider organizations that's one of our partners. But others of you have not yet had that done. You're waiting for a notice uh, to come forward and have the samples obtained and the measurements made. We are adding clinics all the time. And we're also figuring out ways that that can be done very simply uh, by something in your neighborhood, like a Walgreens pharmacy or a Quest laboratory. Those are also going to be part of our plan. So if you haven't been contacted yet about having that blood sample obtained or those simple physical measurements, don't worry. It's coming. We haven't forgotten you. In fact, we very much want to involve you in this in the coming months. So uh, stay tuned. We did hold over 100, uh, over 1,500 events last year to raise public uh, consciousness about what we're doing, and we even have a traveling uh, display for all of us uh, that has been all over the country, uh, landing in various communities and explaining to people what all of us is and inviting them to take part. So a lot has been done just since the official launch of all of us, which, by the way, was less than a year ago, May 6th, 2018 as when this officially got underway. Uh, here we are uh, in March, just 10 months later, and an awful lot has gotten done on our way uh, towards that one million enrollment and all kinds of other things that are going to happen. In fact, here's the graph to show you what that has looked like. Some of you, by the way, were our beta testers 
uh, who got engaged in this even before the official launch so we could kick the tires and see how everything was working. And then since that May uh, timetable of last year, uh, enrollment has gone up steadily. And as we are on track uh, to achieve our one million participants within a five-year period of the original launch. And I'm hoping we might even be able to do it a little sooner, depending on some of the things that we're still working on. Again, even if we're not in a million, we already have one of the biggest studies that NIH has ever mounted. So what else is likely to happen now? Well, there are ways in which we can begin uh, to provide information that is uh, on the website. If you are a member or if you're thinking about it, uh, the website you want to go to down at the bottom of the screen, joinallofus.org, uh, the future of health begins with you. Um, I went there this morning just to check on this and to see whether my website was going to tell me something. It was pretty interesting, actually. I hadn't been there for a little bit. Uh, if you go to the website, you'll see there's a log in a button that you can push, which is circled there in red. And if you're already a member and you click on that, it will open up and it will go to this page, which says the future of health begins with you. What's your password? And of course, we all remember our passwords, right? Uh, if you didn't, well, there's a way to uh, click on that button and they'll help you find a new one. Again, though, we are very concerned about security of the system, so it is password protected. Everything is encrypted. We're very careful about all of that. Okay, so let's assume you got your password and you got in, and it, you will come to this page, which will show you if you have a to-do list of something that you need to do, like fill out a survey. It'll tip you off to that. It'll also tell you a couple of other things. And then over there in the left margin, uh, if you want to start to see how do you measure up with the other people who've signed up, you could click on that button that says My Data. So let's try that. And you'll go to this page, which has a variety of different kinds of data. And it's early days yet, but it's getting pretty interesting, uh, that can show you what you have entered as far as your particular basics or overall health or lifestyle or medical history or family history or healthcare access, and see exactly what's there and also how you compare with other people. So let's click on the overall health. And here's one of the questions that's in there, just asking about your ability to carry out normal physical activities like walking, climbing chairs, uh, stairs, uh, carrying groceries, or moving a chair. And here it shows you, um, in this instance, the example um, says, yes, I'm completely able to do that. You can see from the pie there that some people um, are not able to do that, although about 60% said yes at the completely level. Now, you can even say, OK, what about my age group? And if you do that, you'll see it changes. In our example here, this is somebody who is 18 to 30 years old. So not surprisingly, more of those people say, yes, I can completely do those things. But it gives you a sense of the spectrum of the over 100,000 people that are already involved here uh, by looking to see how this is uh, shaping up with you and, and other people. Well, let me say we're at an a stage here now, less than a year into this, but exciting stuff is really happening now, week by week, that I think you'll want to look at the website even more often and hopefully tune in to some of these presentations that we're starting off here today. And by the way, if you want to send in a question, we're going to come to the question shortly. There's a chat box there that you can use, or if you are on Twitter, uh, you can send us a tweet on hashtag uh, join all of us. Things to come that I want to tell you about. Well, genomics is one thing. That is the study of DNA. And as part of this study, people will be having a very detailed analysis uh, of the DNA that's derived from the blood sample. We have now brought on board three of the most advanced genome centers uh, in the country, actually in the world. And they're our partners in doing this. And again, as I said earlier, this is one of those things where we're not just going to do the analysis. We're going to tell you what we find out. And so coming forward in the course of the next 6 to 12 months, there's going to be a lot more information about the genomics part of this. Secondly, uh, we are launching in the fairly near future, because spring is right around the corner, uh, a data browser, which you will be able to use, which is more sophisticated than what I just showed you with that pie chart about what's in this database uh, from all of us, your data and everybody else's. It will be interesting to see what's there in terms of what people have told the, us about themselves and a variety of other things as we get more and more information about physical measurements and lab tests and so on. Thirdly, one of the points of all of us is to be sure that this data, properly stripped of any personal identifiers, is available to people who have great ideas about what we can learn from it. 
So we do want a research hub to be launched that investigators who have good ideas about what can be learned can get access to it, and that will be happening later this year. Again, want to reassure you that the researchers who go to this site have pledged they will not try to identify individuals, and they will adhere to this very strong security and confidentiality principle. Children currently are not being enrolled because there are special circumstances we have to think about there in terms of ethical considerations and informed consent, but that is underway, and we will be enrolling children in all of us uh, coming over the next year or so. And I guess the last obvious one, the reason we're doing this anyway is to improve the health for future generations. Uh, we're already on that pathway. We're going to learn so much from this. This is going to be written about, I think, decades from now as one of those signal moments where we went from a general sort of one-size-fits-all approach to medicine to understanding things about the individual that gave more and more people a chance to live healthy lives, or if they happen to fall ill, to get the kind of intervention that's right for them instead of something that might have been okay for the average person. But who of us is average? I guess I'm not, and I bet you're not either. So again, if you already are part of this, you know the joinallofus.org website. If you've tuned in and are interested in joining, go to that site and you will find out what's involved in getting to become a member. There's a lot of useful information there. It's not terribly time consuming, but we want to be sure you understand what it is we're trying to do. All of that information out there to help you. And now, I think we ought to move on to hearing your questions. And again, I said a minute ago how to, to send those in. Uh, please, if you have not already started that process, uh, feel free to do so. And Dara and I are going to try to see what we can do uh, to understand uh, what it is that's on your minds and try to answer your questions. And we'll try to take as many as we can in the next few minutes, uh, given that we only have a half hour to do this. We've got a good 10 minutes to do this. And oh, I see questions are already appearing, because we have a screen in front of us to show you what's been uh, sent in here. Um, maybe I'll get started with the first one, which is a question about will participants have access to their genomic sequence, that is their DNA? The answer, yes. Again, we are doing something that is unprecedented by giving all the data back. Now, admittedly, for some of it, we won't be quite sure yet what it means either. Your entire genomic sequence, we understand some parts of it. There's a lot we don't. But for people who want to see that and ask for it, we will give it to them. OK, uh, next question. Um, do we think the 1 million enrollees goal will be met? And if so, when do you anticipate this happening? Will our data still be useful if the goal is not met? Well, our chief engagement officer probably has something to say about that. So yeah, Dara, what do you think? Well, we are really excited. Uh, we absolutely believe that our 1 million goal will be met uh, because we're on track now. Uh, as Dr. Collins mentioned, we have over 110,000 people who've already joined the program, and many more hopefully will join after our conversation today. So we're on track, uh, we're excited about the progress, and absolutely, your data will be valuable um, because researchers will have access to the data for as long as our program exists. We hope uh, you'll be in our program for 10 years or more, uh, but certainly all of the data you utilize by researchers, and that's very, very important. Yeah, Dara just said something really important. Some research studies, you sign up, they talk to you one time, and then that's it. That's not the nature of all of us. The value of this study is going to grow year by year by year as people who are part of this have send in additional data, perhaps encounter some medical situation that can teach us something about how to keep people healthy. And uh, the data sets will be, therefore, valuable increasingly over the course of time. So we're not asking people to sort of sign up one thing and then say goodbye. We're asking you to join our All of Us family and to be involved in this going forward, maybe even for decades, uh, because it will be so valuable. You'll be part of this national adventure that we're all going on together. Another question, um, how will access to the database be regulated for researchers? Will they have to go through special training? Well, we sure don't want people just coming in here and fiddling around. This is supposed to be a research study, and it's supposed to ask and answer important questions. But at the same time, we don't want to set the bar so high that somebody with an idea that could be really valuable but doesn't happen to be 
a PhD working at Harvard uh, can also have a chance uh, to look at the data set. So what we expect of those researchers is to tell us what it is that they are actually interested in and to pledge that they are not going to try to identify the participants and they're not going to therefore break the confidentiality of the data. That's all. But we do want to know what they're doing so that you, the participants, over time can find out what kind of questions are the researchers asking, what kind of answers are they getting. Okay, um, here's one saying, I've enrolled, so will I be contacted for more information soon? I, I know there are people in, in the gym I go to. Everybody signed up okay. uh, when, when well, all of good. us got started. That was great. Uh, but they're wondering, okay, when do I give my blood sample? Because so far they haven't been told what to do. Are they going to be hearing about that soon? Yes, everyone should really stay tuned. Uh, because of the national nature of our program, uh, we may not be able to have sites all over the country all at the same time where we can actually reach people and have them go and provide their, their blood and urine specimens. Uh, but we certainly will be notifying you uh, when we have things ready for you to, uh, places and locations ready for you to go and sign up. And in the interim, we ask you to check back uh, to the Join All of Us website uh, very regularly because in addition to going to provide samples, we'll want you to complete surveys. Uh, we have a survey out now that's about family history. The more that you do and the more information you provide, the more beneficial it will be for researchers and hopefully that data will help researchers get uh, to the advances, but we will absolutely be reaching out to you to ask you to provide more information. And also, if you haven't given a sample already, when we find and have a, a sample, a location uh, in your area, we will let you know. So stay tuned. Check regularly back to the website. It's coming. Do I get to choose which research studies get to use my data? People are interested in knowing, are there some things that maybe I don't want people to be studying? You know, it was very difficult to come up with a way uh, to limit that because you never know where the breakthroughs are going to come from. People sometimes think, well, if I'm really interested in cancer, maybe I should only have cancer studies done on my sample. But sometimes the breakthrough from cancer comes from somebody who was studying the inflammatory diseases and didn't realize that they were all connected. So at the moment, no. Uh, the way when you sign up, basically researchers are able to look at your data for any kind of question. That's the intention of this. What are your main recruitment strategies? Oh, this is a good one for you, Dara. Uh, <laughs> social media, partnering with other organizations, which ones are working best, and maybe how do you make sure that this wonderful diversity that we've gotten off to a good start with gets maintained? Well, we have a healthcare provider organizations across the country who are actually uh, working with their members um, to make sure that they are aware of the program and inviting them to join the program. Uh, the main recruitment strategies are really sharing the great news about the promise of the program, telling people the benefits of participating. There are many reasons for people uh, to join the program. It could be altruistic because you want to contribute mm -hmm. to the health of future generations. It could be because you want your specific community represented. You know, one of the things that Dr. Collins um, uh, you know, mentioned and one of the things that we know all well is that a lot of research studies uh, really don't have a diverse group of participants and that's why our study is so different. Um, so our recruitment strategies involve really sharing the good news about the promise of our program and what it can mean for future generations uh, and also leveraging um, the important uh, information as Dr. Collins shared that this research uh, can be a change agent, a really incredible change agent, so that we can understand better uh, many of the plague, the diseases that plague our communities and hopefully better understand dis disease uh, disparities, but also get closer to prevention. Uh, that's what we're all looking for. We want to be focused on prevention. So it's not just a study, study about disease. It's a study uh, to try to understand um, you know, resilience and prevention. And wellness, absolutely. We only have time for another couple of questions. How is all of us different from 23andMe or Ancestry.com, uh, sites that some of you are familiar with that offer DNA testing to look at some medical issues, but also to look at Ancestry? Does the study have any use for DNA analyses participants have already done through Ancestry.com or 23andMe? Well, 23andMe and Ancestry.com are commercial enterprises. They have been capable of doing some research, but their main focus is to have a service that they provide to consumers. 
It is possible that some of the data that's been collected, although we still have not quite figured out exactly how to incorporate it, might be useful. If you've been a participant in 23andMe and you want to contribute mm -hmm. the data that they've given you, we're going to probably try to figure out how to do that. But we will be doing a lot of the DNA analysis, which will give you that same information, maybe at an even more detailed level mm -hmm. than has been possible with the commercial supp suppliers of this. Um, what does all of us hope to accomplish for and with underrepresented participants? I think you kind of covered that quite nicely a minute ago. How do you measure the success of this program? Uh, what are the metrics? Well, that is a great question. I mean, the simple one is how many people have signed up? And we've showed you some of those metrics. And have they gone all the way through the process, filling out the surveys, uh, giving the blood sample, making their electronic health records available, which is a critical part of this, uh, maybe using a wearable sensor to keep track. We can, we can count those things. Mm -hmm. uh, those are good metrics. But my metric, because of the dream for what this po whole project could do, is is it changing health outcomes? Are we, as a result of this, helping more people have a healthy life, un, uh, tr troubled by medical illnesses? Are we figuring out how to do what we've talked about for these uh, many years in terms of a hypothetical precision medicine. Are we making it a reality? And certainly for me, um, you know, one of the things that I see as success is really changing the way that research uh, is done, yes. um, you know, so that we don't have whole populations who are not involved in the process. Really, in order to get to the point where everyone can benefit from medical advances, everyone must participate in the research and be a part of it. So that's really something that I hope to see, and certainly we're leveraging our community partners. We're also leveraging our participant partners to help us get to that goal. Uh, Dr. Dara Richardson Heron, you've said it very well. I know we are just about out of time, but again, I hope everybody listening to this gets a sense of what an unprecedented opportunity this is to take part in something that's going to be highly significant and which over the course of time we may look at as the way in which we really cross the bridge into new territory for health and new territory for having people as our partners fully engaged in this uh, with full respect of their interests and their needs. Well, I, you know, Thank you so much um, for being here. It's an incredible honor uh, to have you here with us today. Okay. I'm afraid we are out of time, but I want to thank each of you for tuning in and for the many great questions and comments you shared. And I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to get to everyone's questions, but as promised, we'll post responses to questions we missed at joinallofus.org forward slash conversations. Um, and that's also where we'll be archiving the video as well. So you can share it with anyone who missed this event uh, who are interested in learning more about all of us. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just hit the subscribe button next to this stream to get notifications about future videos and conversations. And we'd love to hear what you thought about this first conversation. So look for a survey link in the chat box or in the description uh, for this YouTube event. We really want you to help us shape uh, future topics for future chats. And again, I want to thank you, Dr. Collins, for speaking with us today. And I want to give a huge thanks to our partners at the National Library of Medicine for helping us host this conversation. And I especially want to thank you, our viewers. And we really look forward to seeing you the next time.